Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 7, Infectious Disease. This is our penultimate video, number 28, looking at Indigenous Protocols and Bush Medicine. So the last two videos really are focusing on contemporary applications of Aboriginal protocols in the development of particular medicines and biological materials in Australia and how recognition and protection of Indigenous culture and intellectual property is important. And in this first uh, of these final two, we're going to be focusing on bush medicine. So we'd like you to be able to identify several different native uh, plants or animals that are used in Indigenous medicine to be able to describe some of the protocols that relate to the use of Indigenous um, medicinal practices and also to discuss the importance of recognising and protecting Indigenous cultural knowledge and skills. The traditional custodians of the Australian lands have used the land and its produce for uh, thousands of years. They have a very good understanding of exactly what the land can provide and how to use it to its optimum level. We see applications of um, the use of plants and animals in a range of different applications to treat all sorts of different conditions from grazes and cuts to more serious health issues. This is uh, by no means an extensive list, but some of the different ways in which the Indigenous nations have used materials from the land in order to help treat the sick. This can include things like poultices made from pounded plant material, heated infusions or inhalations, crushed and uh, directly applied plant material to skin or to broken um, wounds, uh, the smoking of barks, the application of saps, uh, mashing or chewing of leaves and fruits, and also um, the very smart in, uh, use of supplementary animal fats to increase absorption rates for many of these particular uh, active ingredient chemicals. We're finding so much about um, what's actually available in our own native flora um, from valuing the information that the Indigenous nations have. Sadly, this hasn't always been the case. Unfortunately, um, since European settlement in the 18th century, there's been uh, quite a lack of respect paid to the uh, Indigenous nations. And we're not just talking about one group uh, of people here. Um, the First Nations people are made up of a whole range of different groups living in different places and solving lots of different problems associated with their use of the land and its produce. What's been needed um, for a long time and what is being uh, developed are ethical principles which guide behaviour in particular situations. And that's what we mean when we refer to protocols. These protocols are designed to protect Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture and intellectual property rights. So there's a great deal of knowledge. And because of the oral traditions of many of these groups um, and, and also the active I guess, push back from a lot of European culture to what um, has been developed and learned over many, many, many generations. Uh, we're losing a lot of that very valuable information. And so um, groups like the Indigenous Bioresources Research Group have tried to counter that loss of knowledge by developing databases that have uh, records of all of these very, very important uses of native plants and animals. Their goal is to um, document and preserve traditional medicinal knowledge, to identify flora of significant medicinal potential, perhaps to isolate the uh, active ingredients, the chemicals that are actually have those specific medicinal properties um, and to, to culture them in assays, um, to identify the major bioactive components. So again, that's about isolating the chemicals and identifying exactly what effects they're having on the body and also provide capacity strengthening for um, a very large knowledge base um, that is has been largely ignored um, by um, many generations in Australia and is being now recognised um, for the great valuable contribution that it makes. Some of the areas of um, bush medicine we'll go into in a little bit more detail in class because I think it's important that you look through some of these specifically. Um, there's some great resources that are available uh, on uh, different websites that are specifically targeted to the types of um, not just 
uh, native plants and animals, but the specific uses to which each of those has been made. This is, as I say, no means an exhaustive list. Um, you'd be familiar with tea tree oil, probably be familiar with tea tree oil and eucalyptus oil and the medicinal um, benefits that they have. Uh, maybe you may not be aware of some of the other things on this list. And so it's important to be able to go through to look at a number of different types of um, products that have been used for different purposes and the uses to which they've been made. And very, very important that we make sure that we record these, that we keep track of these, and that we don't lose a very valuable culture from this country. Thanks for watching.